friends, a long question that comes from this chapter of gypsum products is uh, usually framed as two parts. The first part would be, say, for example, mm, describe the various types of gypsum products. And then they would take up the second part as describe in detail um, about the type 2 gypsum product or say a type 4 gypsum product very commonly asked. So let's see how we'll answer this question. We've discussed the various concepts, right? We've discussed the conceptual part. Now we'll see how the um, formulation of the answer would be based on different types of questions that might come. So if we talk about the LQ, it would be describe the various gypsum products and explain about say for example type 2 gypsum product right or for example they can ask you type 4 anything from type 1 to 5 but what I've seen more commonly is type 4 is pretty common type 2 is pretty commonly asked and uh, you should of course be ready with any type and as i said these specific types can come as separate short notes or short essays that's how the examiner usually makes these questions so when you say uh, the various types of gypsum products you start with the fact that you, you say that the answer would be such that we have five types of gypsum products, right? So we have type one, we have um, type two, type three, type four, and type five, right? Then you write down the reaction, how, how the, you know, how from the starting point that is calcium sulfate dihydrate you heat it to a particular temperature right that is 110 to 130 degrees celsius and then you basically obtain your calcium sulfate hemihydrate right and these are further based on their surface texture and morphology they are further divided into these five types one two three four five now type one and two are the beta form of calcium sulfate hemihydrate right this is how you're supposed to answer this question right and three four five all are alpha forms of calcium sulfate hemihydrate right then you're supposed to further mention the difference the basic difference between the beta form and alpha form so the beta form is more porous has got more surface area are more irregular it's like the lathe cut of low copper amalgam alloy powder something like that you don't have to write that just to understand alpha form is more regular in the form of rods and prisms right and this basically what does it what does this mean they require less water to be dispensed for adequate mixing because they have more surface area they require more water so in general for beta forms that is type 1 and 2 the water power ratio is higher type 3 4 5 the water power ratio is lower and actually this is the order that is followed so when you move from one two three four five the water powder ratio keeps on decreasing because the requirement of water is less and the water powder ratio keeps on decreasing by means 
the strength properties, the hardness keeps on increasing. Right, guys? So, I also want you to may have a rough idea of this diagram. As I said, when the water powder ratio keeps on decreasing, that is when you move from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5, that means the water powder ratio keeps on decreasing, right? And therefore, the strength properties, compressive strength keeps on increasing. So, have a rough idea, like on the x-axis, make water powder ratio. On the y-axis, write compressive strength, right? You don't have to remember the values and just make this trend and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and explain that why this is happening, that first of all, what is happening in this graph and why this is happening. This will get you very good marks. The examiner would immediately know that you know what you're talking about, right? Then, uh, as I said, if they are to ask you as a sub part of this question, they are to ask you specifically, say, write in detail about type 2. So type 2 is model plaster. Again, beta form of calcium sulfate hemihydrate is used here because it requires more water. Of course, the compressive strength is pretty low, just about 9 megapascal. Right, type 1 is even lower, 4 megapascal. Type 1 is actually the impression plaster, which was used for taking impressions of edentulous arches. No longer used nowadays, but yes, it was used. And it's one of the best mucostatic materials. Not best in the sense that it's used nowadays, but in terms of being mucostatic. Then model plaster is the one which is used to, you know, you can use it to uh, stabilize your articulate, uh, your, your models on the articulator. It is used for flasking. It is used for model plasters used to fill while you're making your denture, stabilizing your, you know, your your disarticulated uh, wax pattern, the, the, the teeth setting that you've done in your wax pattern. Now you're ready for denture fabrication or de-waxing procedure and your curing procedure. Then in the flasking procedure, you can use the model plaster, right? Then type 3 dental stone is of course pouring for pouring your final impression. Once you do your border molding and you've taken your final impression with the zinc oxide you know, you pour your final impression with this, with the type 3 because it's harder, it's, it has got more abrasion resistance and therefore it is used as a final cast. Type 4 dental stone is actually, type 4 and type 5 are both dye stones. But specifically if you ask me that if the examiner in your viva asks you tell me one one answer for dye stone, then it would be type 4. That's a classical dye stone. A dye stone's requirement is, as it has been written, it should have high strength. So type 4 is the dye stone. It should have high strength, high abrasion resistance, But at the same time, it should have low expansion. Of course, there will be expansion, but its expansion should be low. Now, why? You know why? Because this was the one which was earlier used for casting gold alloys. If, you, if you're making inlays with casting gold alloys, casting gold alloys are not subjected to very high temperatures. Yes, alloy shrinkage will take place. But if you're using this for you know, the fabrication of uh, the uh, wax pattern for um, uh, the fabrication of an inlay in casting gold alloy, you don't want too much expansion, right, of an, of an inlay in a casting gold alloy. You just want some basic amount of expansion, not too much expansion. Because if too much expansion would be there, then that inlay would be ill-fitting. It would it would it would make it would exert too much too many forces on the walls of the prep right so classically type 4 dental stone is the is the dye stone because in earlier times before, before the use of base metal alloys we basically had gold alloys only for the for the fabrication of indirect inlays and crowns right so high strength high abrasion resistance but low expansion however 
with the advent of base metal alloys which were subjected to much higher temperatures than a gold alloy say for example a gold alloy would completely melt at 600 degrees celsius but a base metal alloy would melt say for example at 900 degrees celsius so obviously it would shrink more if it would shrink more then it has to be compensated for that shrinkage has to be compensated for by a greater level of expansion now that expansion can be there in the wax pattern can be there in the investment mold it can be there in the cast that you're pouring when you've taken your impression of that inlay or for that crown prep so therefore for the casting of base metal alloys you want a greater expansion in your die stone right you want a greater expansion in your die stone and that is why they were marketed now the type 5 is also a die stone but it has got high strength high abrasion resistance as well as high expansion so this is specifically for crowns, say metal crowns or metal ceramic crowns in which the metal coping is made of base metal alloy. Right, right, right guys. So I think if you remember these points and of course you don't have to memorize the, the water powder ratio values but you should know the trend. You should know the trend that from type 1 to type 5 the water powder ratio keeps on decreasing right the compressive strength keeps on increasing as you go from one, 1 to 5 type 1 to 5 right guys now if you get a long question and you feel that you need to fill more pages then you can also write about the physical properties and the variables that affect them for instance in the previous part of the video in the initial part of the video we talked about in detail about the setting time the factors that affect the setting time right the mixing time, the water powder ratio, uh, then we talked about the setting expansion, again the factors that would affect the setting expansion, the mixing time, the water powder ratio, then we talked about the compressive strength, we talked about the wet strength, the dry strength and the green strength. So you can mention all of that when you have a long question of say 10 marks, 15 marks. If you get a short note, you can just write down the important points and just the most important points under the various subheadings, right? Of course, apart from this, you can get specifically, you can get um, the, uh, as a short note, the setting reaction or the theories of setting. So we discussed that also in great detail, right? The three theories of setting, the soul gel theory, right? The hydration theory, the uh, dissolution precipitation theory. You have to mention that dissolution precipitation theory is the one which is most accepted. You have to mention that um, the effect of increasing temperature on the setting time of gypsum. So, you know, I think we've, so this, this way, you know, usually the theory paper of second prof is formulated. You can get a little LQ. You can get either of these as part of the LQ of the long question. You can get short notes right across the board starting from the theories of setting, the factors that affect the setting time, setting expansion, factors that affect the setting expansion. You can get a short note on accelerators and, mod and, and retarders in general or specifically chemical modifiers in gypsum products. You can, you can be asked that. You can be asked about the strength or in general you can be asked about the properties and the factors that affect the properties of gypsum products. So in that you'll have to write setting time, setting expansion, and strength right guys so i think uh, this way we've covered everything and all the possible questions the short notes the viva questions and the lqs that can come from this chapter of gypsum products